Another very practical example on heat transfer is the heat being transferred through the walls of a house. In a typical house, on the outside has stucco, that's kind of like a concrete material or cement material, plywood, an air gap, and then drywall on the inside. And in some houses, they even put insulation in the walls, and we'll do an example later on that shows the difference between a house that has no insulation versus a house that does have insulation. Here I put down the, uh, the conductivity values for stucco, plywood, drywall, and air, and the, and the thicknesses, typical thicknesses for these various substances. So again, the equation normally says that the dQ dt is equal to the conductivity constant, times the cross-sectional area, times the difference in the temperature, divided by the length of the path. And again, since there are four different, different uh, materials, four different layers, we're going to say in this case that we, the, the, the QDT is equal to A times the difference in the temperature divided by L1 over K1 plus L2 over K2 plus L3 over K3 plus L4 over K4. And uh, for the cross-sectional area, we'll just take a typical one square meter segment. So let's uh, let A equal one meter squared. And for the difference in the temperature, let's say that uh, on a cold day that the uh, T in, or in this case, this is stucco, so that would be T out, is equal to zero degrees centigrade. And then the T in would be equal to 20 degrees centigrade, which is room temperature. So using those numbers, and that this of course would be for each square meter or wall, and of course a house has a lot of square meters, let's see what the heat loss would be through a wall that's not insulated. So in this case, that would be one square meter, difference in the temperature is 20, divided by, and just to keep it clean, I'm gonna leave off the units in this case. So L1, L1 right here is gonna be two centimeters, so that's uh, 0 0.02 divided by K1, which is 0 0.8. So that's the constant of concrete, uh, plus the thickness of the plywood, one centimeter, so 0 0.01 divided by, uh, the wood has a much better insulating capability, so it has a much smaller K, uh, plus L3, that would be the air, about eight centimeters of air, 0 0.08 uh, divided by the K for air, which is of course small, 24 like that. And then finally, the last layer would be the drywall on the inside. That would be um, 0 0.01, about one centimeter thick. And that would be a 0 0.6 conductivity coefficient. So let's find out how much heat. And this, would, this of course will be in joules per second or watts that we lose through each square meter of surface. So we have 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.8 plus 0 0.01 divided by 0.1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.024 plus 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.6 equals. That's the denominator. Now we're going to help go ahead and take the inverse of that to bring it to the numerator times 20 and we get 5.8 watts or 5.8 joules per second which is equal to 5.8 watts. All right. So let's say a typical house, uh, let's say a single story house that has walls maybe three feet high, maybe, uh, let's say maybe 20 meters this way. So that's, let's uh, kind of think about the four walls. So one wall would be three by 20. Uh, that would be the long wall and would be two of those plus uh, the width of the house, eh, maybe 15. So. Uh, uh, 3 times 15, there would be two walls of that. So I'm just trying to calculate the total area here. So uh, that would be 60 times 2, that would be 120, plus uh, the 45 times 2, that's 90, which is equal to 210 square meters. All right, so if I multiply the total area of a house, that's not including the roof, not including the floor, simply the walls, 210 square meters times about 6 watts uh, per square meter, uh, six times that, that would be 1,200 watts of heat being lost through the walls on a cool winter day. That's quite a bit of heat. And so you can see that you would have to keep the heat going inside the house and quite a bit of that heat would be leaking through the walls to the outside. And you would, of course, want to minimize that. So you definitely want to reduce this number as much as possible to keep from heating, from losing heat. But anyway, for our purpose, we're trying to find the heat going through a wall. 
recognize there's four layers, so account for the R value of the four layers, um, and then we can calculate the heat loss per square meter multiplied times the total amount of square meters, and that's the total amount of heat loss per second that you can expect through the walls. On the next example, we'll do the same thing, but now we're going to put some insulating material here. Remember this number, let's see how much it reduces by putting some insulating material right and just having a layer of air there. 